The COVID-19 pandemic was officially declared a global health crisis three years ago by the World Health Organization. And this week, the WHO said the pandemic is not, not yet over. Nevertheless, many countries around the world are returning to some sort of normality. Measures such as wearing masks in public have been scrapped. But life is far from normal for the millions of people who continue to suffer from the effects of their COVID infections months or even years after they've had it. They have what's called long COVID. One family in the UK showed us how it's changed their lives. Abandoned. That's often how people with long COVID feel. Sammy McFarland was infected with COVID-19 three years ago. She still suffers from lethargy, difficulty concentrating, and the loss of her sense of smell. She's had to give up working and sell her house. Her husband has become her carer, but her daughter, who was 14 when she caught COVID, has had an even worse time of it. She was blacking out, fainting. Um, she had really severe abdominal pain, and the pain would paralyze her. Sammy is slowly recovering, but her daughter Kitty is still having a tough time. Lots of people have heard that kids can't get long COVID or COVID because they have strong immune systems, they're young and healthy. I'm 16. I, I was 14 when I got it. And I was a sporty, young, active teenager. And there were lots of brilliant, curious doctors and researchers out there, um, but it isn't yet enough and it hasn't yet found a treatment. Um, that, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. We need investment in biomedical research. In Britain, about 70,000 children suffered COVID symptoms for longer than three months. London's University College Hospital is carrying out the world's biggest study, tracking 7,000 11 to 17-year-olds. Long COVID affects about 10%. Most eventually recover, but for about 1% of the cases, symptoms can persist for a very long time. It's commoner in girls than boys. It's commoner in older children than younger children. Uh, the things that seem to make you more vulnerable are um, if you've got health problems, physical or mental health problems before the pandemic. There's no quick cure, and it's not yet well understood. Professor Stevenson says long COVID is still a puzzle. For Sammy, she tries to deal with it by getting back to her old hobbies, like swimming in the sea. Her daughter Kitty is also making slow progress. Now, in the U.S., a study has highlighted several risk factors for contracting long COVID. Published in the journal Research in the Emerging Infectious Diseases, it found women, current and former smokers, and people who had a more severe course of the infections are more likely to go on to develop the condition. Experts say there are at least 65 million people around the world currently experiencing long COVID. The lasting legacy of the coronavirus pandemic comes in the form of long COVID. More than three years after COVID-19 first broke out, we still haven't pinned down what causes it. One study reported that 36% of people who had a positive PCR test for COVID-19 went on to develop the condition. Most long COVID cases are in patients who weren't originally hospitalized with the virus. We are seeing people who are suffering from over 200 different symptoms that impact multiple different organs. And uh, we currently don't know the exact cause of long COVID and that's something that we are investigating. The organs affected can include the heart, lungs, immune system, kidneys, brain, liver and the reproductive system. Long COVID has been associated with reduced sperm count, diabetes, blood clots and strokes. The sheer number and diversity of symptoms makes singling out the cause difficult. Researchers are investigating four main possibilities. It may be that there's a store of the coronavirus hidden somewhere. The immune system could be turned against the body. The initial infection could have activated other dormant viruses, and tissues damaged in the early days of the illness may not have been properly repaired. And these four hypotheses are not mutually exclusive. It's possible that a person can have multiple of these things going on or sequentially, and that's what we're investigating. Long COVID may last for weeks, months or years after an initial infection. 
patients with bone COVID have been waiting so long to have some sort of uh, therapy that's effective. And um, we, we really need to start randomized placebo controlled clinical trials as soon as possible. Um, there are some trials that have already begun, but we need a lot more and a lot, a lot quicker than the pace that we're doing it right now. Hakiki Iwasaki and her colleagues are planning a trial to investigate the effectiveness of the antiviral drug Paxlovid at treating long COVID. The priority for the scientists is to find therapies that work. In the meantime, the emphasis is on rehabilitation for patients to try and help them cope. And we are now joined by Amanda Castell, a professor of epidemiology at George Washington University, an expert on long COVID, and I believe you've also worked on that study we've just talked about. Professor, have we taken long COVID seriously enough? Uh, no, I would say we haven't, especially if you look at the different stories that we're hearing about from individuals who really are suffering severely from the impact of long COVID. We don't have a good sense of how many people have long COVID. We don't know how long people suffer from long COVID. We have no really great ideas around um, prevention around long COVID or treatment around long COVID. Mm -hmm. And so um, it really is a poorly understood condition that we need to put our resources towards studying more and really trying to understand and support people who develop this condition. So why is that the case? Why do we know so little about long COVID? Have we been focused too much on, on the actual uh, COVID pandemic? Well, I think it was initially the response was focused on those acute infections. And it was not until several months later that we started to see that people were having long lasting effects from having these acute infections. And so, um, you know, groups like ours at George Washington University recognized this and thought that we better start to also focus on the long term impacts of COVID-19. So. I think it's a condition that we're starting to see more research and um, effort put towards understanding, but it has been somewhat delayed. Mm. Now, let's start with the numbers. Uh, uh, do we even know how big the problem is? How many people actually do have long COVID? So we don't. We don't really understand the magnitude of this condition. Um, at least in the United States, it's not a reportable condition, whereas, you know, acute infection with COVID is. So we really need to kind of shift what we're doing in terms of tracking the numbers of individuals with long COVID. If you look at various studies, the range is 10% to 80% of people may suffer from long COVID. And if you think about globally, the overall number of people who've had acute COVID-19 infections, which is somewhere over 700 million individuals, even if we use a conservative estimate of one in three individuals, that's over 250 million people that might be suffering from this condition. But we really don't have a good sense. It also can be a um, short-term condition in some people where they may have symptoms for weeks, some people have symptoms for months, and some people have symptoms for more than a year. Or for some individuals, the symptoms of long COVID will wax and wane. And so where they think they've resolved their infection, it may come back and actually, um, you know, be exacerbated several months or weeks later. Now, in, in many pe uh, countries, people have been vaccinated against COVID multiple times, uh, but it does not seem to prevent long COVID, does it? Well, there is some type of signal that vaccines may be protective against long COVID. We certainly know that they are protective against severe infection, um, morbidity and mortality, such as hospitalization and death from acute COVID-19 infection. But for example, in our study, when we compared people who were up to date on their vaccines for COVID, so people who'd been fully vaccinated and been boosted, those individuals had a lower likelihood of being of having long COVID compared to individuals who just received their first series of vaccines and people who hadn't been vaccinated. So that does give us an indication that vaccines may be protective against long COVID. But, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done to really understand the role of vaccines and their role in long COVID. Mm. So with we know that little about it. So there's hardly any prospect for a cure, is there? 
Well, we don't have a cure right now. And unfortunately, um, most of the treatment that we have available to people with long COVID is really supportive. So it can be a multi-system um, condition. And we really try to direct people who have long COVID to work with specialists. Um, the range of symptoms is broad. It can range mm. from fatigue and insomnia to mental health conditions. Um, and so really we try to get people plugged in uh, to specialists who can support them. And then there's a lot of ongoing research to really try to understand this condition better. And hopefully that will give us some indication as to how we can um, cure people and certainly prevent people from getting long COVID. Amanda Castell, a professor of epidemiology at George Washington University. Thank you very much for your time.